Welcome to the Scariest Things Podcast, your gateway to the trends and tropes of the horror genre. Tonight is episode 51! Yeah, and you know the best thing about 51? What? It's halfway to 100? No, no. it's the, uh, <laughs> it's the <laughs> Roman numerals is that too for 50, 51 is L-I. L-I. This is my. Eric, this is, this is your, this is, this is, this is your podcast. This is like super, when Super Bowl 51 <laughs> came around, I, I, I was tempted just to get a Super Bowl shirt, even though I didn't care about either of the teams because L-I. it said Super Bowl Lee on it. it was, yeah, it's really cool. You can't beat that. I don't think we will get to a point in time where Roman numerals spell out Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts with a C, so that would be a hundred. C, A, I don't think, yeah, I don't think A. I don't think we're going to get there. Nope. <laughs> Unless the Romans make a miraculous comeback and, and readjust their entire scoring tabulation. Yeah, well, I, you know, maybe there's some sort of a, a, a weird sect of Romans that uh, did, you know. Sure. That Campbell actually is uh, yeah. like the it's number not, for like it's not happening. 72. It's not happening. Let's just stick with Lee is very cool. It is very let's, cool. Let's just stick so, with that. So All right, tonight, tonight, that. tonight we are covering... Uh, we, we, we took a major pause, as you all recall, uh, this, this summer and into the early fall of, of 2018, a miraculous year for us. We started talking about, uh, we talked about a, a, a number of different things, but we started covering from horror's very inception, uh, going back into the 1800s, mm-hmm. uh, into the Golden Age, into the Atomic Age, into, uh, uh, well, that's kind of where we left off. We left off at the tail end of the Atomic Age, and now we're picking up from the tail end of the Atomic Age, and we're getting into the early, the early portion of the 1960s. Now, the 1960s, as I think we're going to talk about a lot tonight in, in horror, was a, a super important and very formative uh, decade that 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 you really started to see a lot of different things break open, and you started to see a lot of different countries get yeah. involved in horror yeah. Yeah, that that hadn't previously been involved, or they might have been involved, but maybe maybe in a, in a tangential kind of way. This is the 1960s is a very 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 defining year, and um, 1960 explicitly is a big is a big year in nine, the genre. It is, and interestingly, I don't think any of my films are from 1960. Okay, yeah, and we've we've talked a lot about. I mean, we've 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 certainly talked about a lot of films from the 1960s in the context of the top 100 horror uh i think there was black sunday was on the list um Mm -hmm. uh uh, uh, the the haunting was on the list Uh, obviously psycho was 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 scored very high Mm -hmm. uh yeah uh, rosemary's baby scored very high but we're we're really just going to try to focus on the sort of the early part of the 1960s because there is kind of a break point and i did did a little bit of research around that break point there was a number of different things going on like Mm -hmm. The MPAA was starting to like the, the the origins of the MPAA were kicking around. Right. You had color film being made more accessible. The Hayes Code had almost it was dying a a quick death. At this the point. Hayes Code was dying a quick death. You had a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people when I was doing my research were clearly influenced by Alfred Hitchcock and in particular Psycho and said, "Oh my God, if you can put that on film, we can." We can we can take that five notches higher. Yeah, like if, if this guy's able to do it, and he's able to show a woman being stabbed in a shower. Oh, oh my God, Herschel we, Gordon. Yes, Herschel Gordon Lewis. We can we can take this like in a far 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 more grisly direction, and they did. Yeah. I and, mean, they they really really did. But there were I think I think there were a number of things that you can say that nineteen sixty. The way that I see it is nineteen sixty was the year that horror movies grew up. Um, I think that oh, you, yeah. you had some th- some <clears throat> movies from the fifties, like Night of the Hunter mm-hmm. and The Bad Seed, Bad Seed, yes, um, where it was playing to an, a more adult audience. Oh yeah, um, for sure, for sure. But there was so much of the horror from the nineteen fifties, which was. Uh, you know the black it was black scorpion it was well it was all it was conquered all, it, the earth it was all the radiation atomic scare yeah. kind of stuff and, and, which and, was which 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 i mean godzilla begat a lot of that but cuz godzilla was 1954 yeah. and you started to see black scorpion and tarantula and 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 all that kind of stuff right thereafter and the blob you know the, day, but, day of the triffids but a day of the triffids actually is a, is a 60s movie oh yeah that's right because um, uh, we were talking about sort of the matinee era and the right. end of the matinee era and it, yeah, it kind of limped right. along into the 60s but by and large 
uh, 1960s broke the dam, and and it was the the era where horror movies grew up. And uh, for uh, you know, I think that you were mentioning that it's very much an international wave. Well, right, because I think you know, I think in 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 a lot of cases you had you had. You, I mean, there wasn't so much coming out of Germany, but the the UK, obviously France, France, uh, Italy. Spain, Italy, Japan. I mean, all those places who obviously played major role in World War II. You know, I think we're still dealing with the ravages of World War II in the 1950s, and 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 you know, their 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 filmmaking prowess was not it wasn't fully up to speed in the 1950s, and so there wasn't. A ton, a ton of contrib- I mean, there were still contributions from those countries, but it wasn't profound. It was it was not as profound as American yeah. filmmaking in the 1950s. And so, when the 1960s rolled around, and I think a lot of those economies were back online, right. and a, and a lot of there there was a lot more fr- a lot more intellectual freedom to yeah. explore. Um, you saw just some amazing, amazing, amazing yeah. stuff come out in the 1960s from a lot of foreign well, sources. I, and we will, we'll, I mean, I think we, we I think we're probably going to go back and and touch more deeply on uh, foreign impact on film in the 1960s, maybe at a later date. But oh, we, that's, we'll, okay. We'll, I think but, we might be but, we might be running crosswise here. We might be because I think, but uh, we'll, we'll touch on it. We'll touch on some of it today. Yeah, because yeah, I, mean, I think what what because most of the stuff that I have is is actually um, either. Uh, foreign or foreign influenced. Um, well, yeah, it's all. It's yeah. it's definitely all. Yeah, and and you know, I think if you take a look at the directors of the non horror movies that were pushing the boundaries of the of of film, you had Francois Truffaut, you uh-huh. had uh, uh, Fellini, yep, you had Jean Luc Godard, you yep. had a bunch of these. You know, uh, for all of you telecommunications and film majors, Kurosawa, is, yeah, Kurosawa, yeah, absolutely, and that that this was. Um, a generation of filmmakers post post war, and that they would uh, utilize violence and sex, sex in particular, right. very differently than what American standards were willing to put up with. Right, and um, and people were going to go see these movies. I mm-hmm. think you would have art house movies. I think that the, you know, the 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 stereotypical notion of the '60s as a revolutionary change in political and social culture. Definitely, the 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 popular that that film, if it wasn't leading it, was in lockstep with the changes of the era. Well, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, that's 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 a, that's an interesting question because I mean, it's, it's certainly a lot of these films really predated, um, you know, Timothy Leary's LSD experiments yep. and the Vietnam War being in you know full swing. But I mean, the, we, we were still in a a, a policing role yep. in Vietnam in the early nineteen sixties, and right. so yeah, I mean, cer- certainly. Um, I would say, yeah, I would, I would argue a lot of the, a lot of the foreign film, a lot of the American film as yeah. well in the early 1960s had a major, major yeah. impact. I mean, there was obviously a, a whole other ball of yeah. social considerations that were happening towards the latter part of the 1960s mm-hmm. that may, yeah. maybe, maybe film didn't necessarily, necessarily contribute to, but, but, but so, it, was well, cer- it was know, certainly, it was certainly 1968. In the, it was certainly you know, in the mix. Yeah. Yes, Night of the certain, Living Dead. I mean, yes. we'll get there. But oh yeah. That is, um, we have talked about that film a plenty. Yes, a plenty. So you know, I think there's this is uh, the, the the other part of the divergence, mm-hmm. apart from uh, this international gothic flair. I think right. Hammer films, yep. AIP films, <clears throat> very much taking on sort of period piece. Right, um, right, yeah. A lot of a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the films in the 1960s really did take on a heavy, heavy gothic. Yeah. Victorian kind of quality, and then the other, but the or, other, or even Middle Ages, like in the case of Black Sabbath, um, yeah. Or I don't you know, want one of the ones. That I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to jump the gun, yeah. but yeah, Black Sabbath. I mean, is yeah. is all set yeah. in in period. Yeah, and and it was the trend. Mm. Um, and, and but there was also uh, the not not Tony Iommi. And no, <laughs> no, Geezer Butler, <laughs> uh, and, and, and Bill Ozzie. and Bill Ward and some other guy. Um, not those guys. Different Black Sabbath. This is the um, Boris Karloff yeah, Black the, Sabbath. The, 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 the Strangler from Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, there was no Frankenstein. There was, there was definitely, I think that the B movie also went adult. Um, oh, where, where, yeah, the, where absolutely. The B movie yeah. of, of the past was I Was a Teenage Werewolf or right. um, you know, some, some uh, I think that it's sort of some of those kinds of films limped into the 60s like uh, the... Uh, Beach Party Monster, and you know yep. these, ki- these kinds of things, but um, 
this is the dawn of Grindhouse, and and I think well, you're probably right. going to touch probably on that. I I think it's I think we're kind of kind of thinking about breaking this yeah the, we, the, we, the we, we might be, into we, several qu- into, into quadrants. We might sorts. we might be breaking it up in, into a more finite kind of way because yeah, certainly the, the, I mean the 1960s really is the, I. I think it's the point at which horror took on all of its subgenres, right? Mm-hmm. Like prior to that, horror really was just sort of horror. I mean, maybe you could argue in the 1950s, horror was broken into horror and monster horror. Yeah. But it was mostly, in, in really in the 50s, it was largely sci-fi monster horror. Right. You didn't have right, right, a right. whole lot of, even the classic universal monsters, um, there weren't... There wasn't a Frankenstein, Dracula imprint on on that era. So much later, as Hammer started getting in with the Christopher Lee stuff, like fifty eight, right? Uh, but that and that carried its way all the way through to the nineteen seventies, the Christopher Lee Hammer stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, the the nineteen sixties gave you Giallo, it gave you yep. slashers, it gave you zombies, it gave you gore, it, it gave, gave you cults, you it cults, gave you it gave you devils, m- more grindhouse, or certainly more yeah. grindy grindhouse. Yes. The grindhouse became yeah. a it, real grind. It, 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 it changed. It like, changed from being sort of uh, cheap, uh, sort of cheaply made things like it conquered the world, and poorly done but fun and silly, safe for teenagers kind of stuff to becoming um, really gory. Right and, and well, right because I mean, Grindhouse goes. I mean, I think Grindhouse origins are go all the way back into the 1930s. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's that's when the true origins of the the, the, the term come from. But um, the 1960s gave it a, just a radically different flair, where it was like all bets mm-hmm. are off. We yeah. can we can do anything we want to do. Yeah. We can show you nudity. We can show you gore. We can show you a tongue being ripped out through somebody's throat. Yeah. <laughs> we are not yeah. above this. Yeah. Car and crashes and martial arts and uh, oh yeah, and, and the whole that thing. Stuff, that that stuff certainly uh mm-hmm. and I think it's a it's a it becomes a bit of an exponential ramp uh, the closer we get to 1970. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I think there are still some things where I, you know, I've I've commented how much I and loved. it becomes not only an exponential ramp, it becomes an exploitive ramp. Yeah, very <laughs> <laughs> touche. <laughs> um, you know, I think the like one of my favorite bridge movies uh, mm-hmm. that sort of is exemplified in the 1960s is Spider Baby. Oh yeah, for um, sure. We talked about that. Yeah, uh, uh, talked about it a fair bit, but I think it 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 sort of embodies or sort of sits right in the middle of the era. When it's, it's featuring Mr. Sid Haig from Three from Hell and Lon Chaney and Lon Chaney, I know which is so weird. Um, yeah, and, and these, he's Lon these, Chaney, so this, this avuncular, these, these kind of guy. slubbish, yes. <laughs> but it's it was really sort of sitting sitting on a moment where these movies were just going to get, uh, you know, it was it was extraordinarily inexpensively done. It right. looked tacky and cheap, but and they had a ton of fun doing. But it is the genetic predecessor to the uh, things like Evil Dead and even sort of like the Rob Zombie, the real kind of the campy, oh yeah, campy horror well, stuff. Certainly, it's the it's, it's the precursor to Dawn of the Dead too. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I I, I think I think it was I I as as I was going through and, and doing my research and. And taking a look at a lot of these films, I it, for me it just it it really reeked of excitement, right? Yeah. Like it was like it just as I said before, all bets are off. Something's we, up. Something's up. We can do whatever we want. We can push the buttons. Nobody's really watching us, and if they are watching us, they're giving us a passive or a tacit nod, right? They're right. saying, "Yeah, you can do this. Right. It's cool. Keep doing it. Keep keep pushing the env- pushing the envelope because who knows what the hell's going to happen or if if we'll get you know cracked down at some point and the answer was no it, the, mean, the crackdown didn't happen the you know, crackdown what happened did the, not happen the uh, the MPAA was was created and then you got the R and the X rating which allowed for a lot of different things yep that's right um, and i think we're still sort of in the in the aftermath of uh, in in sort of the the rating situation now some of the the things that exceed, you know, the X has largely gone away, and now it's right, like right, we're going right. to go straight to video or to, to streaming, and we're just not going to go for a rating, and therefore you get something like the farm, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, why don't uh, why don't you go ahead and lead us off with uh, with your with the fearsome foursome of what you're. Uh, what you're thinking here? That is there anything else that you want to? Uh, no, no, no. I think we've covered it. I'm going to go straight into. I'm going to go. Sort of into the mid 1960s uh, with my first film, number four on the fearsome foursome list. This is the 1964 film called Onibaba, also known as 
the demon hag. Yeah. This is a uh, a Japanese historical drama written and directed by Kanito Shindo. Uh, the film is set in uh, the 14th century and it involves a uh, a, an older woman and her daughter-in-law mm-hmm. who have effectively been set aside in this kind of swampy marsh with incredibly tall grass and reeds to sort of fend for themselves. Um, you know, fend for themselves in the middle of, you know, these battling uh, Japanese right. clans. And the way they fend for themselves is, I mean, almost in kind of almost a weird way. It's like a precursor to like, I'm not saying they're cannibals, but it's it's kind of a weird, <laughs> it's like a precursor to Texas Chainsaw where they are basically, um, uh, you know, uh, people that have come out from the conflict, uh, you know, soldiers and whatnot have that have wandered away from the conflict. They prey upon them throw them in this giant pit only to like kill them, retrieve their bodies, sell the armor, sell their swords, just basically right. for subsistence to survive. They sell them to this, this weird kind of merchant who gives them, um, you know, who gives them uh, essentially millet uh, mm-hmm. and grain uh, that they use effectively to survive off of. And the film is really interesting. It's, it's based apparently on a Buddhist parable uh, called Yome Odishe no Men, which I'm sure I'm butchering, but which basically means the the bride screaming mask. Um, which yeah, that mask is that's, the that's mask really is cool. super creepy. It's basically the the story the parable. It's like, an, it's like an ogre of some sort. It's like yeah, it's like ogre ogre devil demon yep. witch. Mm-hmm. mashup um, but it's basically where uh, the mother would use the mask to scare the daughter from going to the temple and she was punished by having the mask sticking to her face and when she begged uh, to be allowed to remove the mask it of course pulled all the skin off making her a demon hag uh, uh, so it's it's um, it's kind of funny actually that there's a um, I wonder how much reference they took from Black Sunday uh, with that. Maybe, I mean, maybe was, a little. Certainly, there was a um, maybe a little. Yeah, there's a lot of mask action in the '60s. There was a lot of mask action, but th- you know, this is this this, of course, you know, is is now is now available as a Criterion film. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's legit, legit. You no, know, it's a, uh, it, it is a, although, although it does, you know, if you go back and you look at the. If you go back and really look at a lot of the critics' reviews of it, it's it's a pretty mixed bag. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, a lot of people thought it was just kind of like sloppy and not well done, but. I'm telling you, it is. It's absolutely one of the more mesmerizing films I've ever seen. Because, as I say, the whole thing it's it's kind of difficult to describe, other than it's shot in probably like uh, eight foot tall grass reeds in this swampy area, mm-hmm. and the grassy reeds kind of almost take on like a character in the film uh-huh. uh, because the grassy reeds are like constantly like flowing. Around and swirling around, and 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 it, and it, it creates and it, this, it disguises and it hides, and it's got some mystery draped in it. Yeah, and it, it creates this. Yeah, kind of, it creates this kind of mysterious aura about the area that they're in, and of course, in the middle of this grassy reed is this you know giant hole that they. Um, that's where they. That's mm-hmm. that's where they take their victims to, and they they eventually kill them. Um, the and the film is 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 great on a number, for a number of reasons. One, it 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 just shows like sort of um, and it really kind of gets at like how desperate people will become, mm-hmm. and what and like what lengths they will take just to survive. Now, do you think there were any um, you know in the way that Godzilla was a parable for the for nuclear destruction and right. and the war? Did, do you sense that there was did, was there any sort of cultural? mirroring that you see there or do you think it's more of a classic tale uh i think well i i you know i didn't i didn't take that deep a dive i i i know it is a classic tale and i mean i know the director um uh shindo you know obviously uh, you know laid on this um this this buddhist parable um but um and and there and there you know i i will say there's also some some argument i'm not, i mean, i know I'm not, <laughs> I'm not answering your question yeah. here but i there, there is some argument too in in uh, sort of classic film um literature about whether this is even a horror film i i i, I think it's a, i know it, it, it i think it's a straight up horror film it, it shows up a lot <laughs> in a lot of the great um and I can't. I, movies. I and can't remember if it. Did, do, do you do you remember offhand if it made our three hundred and eight? Yeah, I think so. I think it yeah. was on the list. I, you know, I would. 
would almost be tempted. Yeah. Maybe not top twenty-five. I'd put it top thirty. It's it, yeah. it's that it's that beautiful and it's mm-hmm. that interesting. Well, I know that there has been a call for you know. I think one one of our uh, big uh, participants in in the jury and 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 the guy who I will often credit to being the most knowledgeable yeah. about this stuff, Jeff Dean. Yeah. Uh, has has requested it's like let's expand it to a top fifty from everybody and that way we can get more of these things. It's like well I, that that is a bit of a bear relative to the spreadsheet but only I think Baba would show up in a top yeah 50. I, and and I think that you know I now that we have um, all right let's do it uh, done uh, it's like, <laughs> Jeff it's done it's well, done get your top fifty ready <laughs> get your top fifty ready uh, you know because I think that I think it'll be interesting to see what kind of a uh, we. When when what happens if we expand the the, the list? Right. Um, of course, I'm just asking for it by doing this. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, here, here's one of the things, folks. If you guys want to participate in the next draft of the top 100, yes, uh, join us on our Patreon page. Um, and Heck yeah. uh, you know, if you're uh, if you're one of the more generous contributors, you yes. get to be one of the jurors. Uh, or if you yeah. happen to be an industry insider, of course we you know we'll give you a waiver <laughs> on that. But um, you know, I think although we have, if you're an industry in- insider, then you got the money to pay for it. So just, yeah, that's just right. Just pay just, up, just, pay up, money bags, because <laughs> we got some new technical equipment we got to pay for. Um, uh, All right, but, let's but let's get on, let's get down on the list and number four. My on number your four, four some list. Uh, I'm going to start with 1960. Yep. Uh, so um, year. this was a, a huge year uh, because we talked about Psycho. Yep. Uh, this one is, uh, and, and we talked about the French influence, and this mm-hmm. is a, a French movie. This is Eyes Without a Face. Oh, um, okay. So uh, directed by Georges Franju, I think is how you say his name. Also a Criterion Collection film. All, yeah, it is. Uh, have, you, have you seen Eyes Without a Face? I watched it last week. Okay. Um, uh, it, although, I'm going to say... It was more thriller than horror. I well, it is. It, there's no supernatural element to it, but there's not. There's not. There's not a supernatural. Element. There's definitely a mad scientist kind of a thing. I think there's that definitely this has, killing. Lots of killing. It has. <laughs> it has a bit of get out to it. I it, absolutely yeah. Um, in in that you know it's it's the. Jordan Peele, nice rip off. Yeah, they they nice, lured nice an unexpecting job, uh, victim to a house. Um, Victim, beautiful home. Victims. Yes. Lots. Um, and lots of poor dog victims. Lots of do- yeah, do- <laughs> and, 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 you know, I think this one, you know, when, when, when you think, <coughs> pardon me, uh, when you think of, of some of the big violent moves, the changes in 1960, there's, there's the, uh, there's the stab, the shower stabbing. Right. You have peeping Tom. Right. You have with the with the 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 spike at the end of the camera. Yep. You've got uh, and you got the mask, uh, the the the, uh, the Iron Maiden mask that gets applied in in Black Sunday. Right. No, and the, there is um, the moment where uh, uh, Doctor uh, Genesseur gets uh, set upon by the dogs and he gets torn apart by dogs. Right. Right. Uh, that is this one. This movie at the time, and that was actually pretty effective, save for a couple of dogs. <laughs> a couple of dogs were wagging. Look very, they looked very confused. Like, yeah. what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> well, you know, I know that they had uh, a uh, several of the, scenes. A couple of the dogs were like, they were into it. They were like, oh yeah, it's on. And then a couple of the dogs were like, wait, what am I? What am I supposed <laughs> like, to be doing? Just <laughs> running around in circles. I'm like, I, I just want some dog chow. Um, which actually, you know what, probably wouldn't have been that different a reaction to like if my dog had gotten right. gotten beaten up and tortured by this. This he probably still would have went run around and just sort of wandered around in the woods. I somewhere. think Mookie would have been looking for some dog chow. <laughs> so, uh, but I I thought that the and that was kind of the climax of the film too. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, okay. it, yeah, yeah, kind of was. Yeah, um, sorry. Spo- so spoiler, spoiler um, alert. But the I I think. The idea of a man so possessed with preserving the look of his daughter who had gone through a, a car crash that it, it sounds right. like it was his fault. Uh, well, yeah, no, it definitely was. And, it definitely was, yeah. And that he keeps on trying to graft a new face onto his daughter. The, right. I, I, I think the other thing that the, what, what I think set audiences off was the fact that they would actually sew the surgical removal of the of of the victims' faces, right, right. Um, Which in 1960 looked super hokey, but it was 
it was like, oh my god, yeah, they're, they're actually, actually cutting into, into her skin, and, and there's blood. Face <laughs> off their lips, and like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I'm sure that a 1960 audience would have gone, would have would have I, run from the run from the theater. Even though it was kind of hokey, I cringed a little bit. Yeah, it was, I definitely cringed. I surgery it was scenes, cringe, man. It was come cringe, on, it was cringeworthy. Yeah. In in the same way that you know, in, in Get Out, where they're taking the crani- the skull cap off of mm-hmm. uh, Stephen Root, uh, and and right, it's like okay. I just it, it just <laughs> makes your toes curl. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I I thought it was. Uh, well, it's a beautiful film. It too. was. It was it's beautiful. A, it was, it was really, engaging really from the get go. I thought it was very very French. Uh, the, my, you know my 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 only my only gripe with it, just having seen it recently, was the, the doctor, the the father of the the young girl who's trying to graft the face back onto um, or a face onto his daughter mm-hmm. was he, he was he seemed to be a little flat he did he never seemed to be really menacing to me he just played it like really flat like was, well you know what i screwed up and so this is something i gotta do mm-hmm. i got I, I gotta i gotta get i gotta kill somebody so i can get a new face for my daughter and i gotta put the face on this you know on my daughter and yeah it's this it's what i gotta do he didn't go full-on reanimator no, there was no reanimator. There was, <laughs> <laughs> there was no leather face. It was just kind of like, yeah, you know, this he, is what well, I got to do. I, but I think what that it was did a, was it, it was played, a little, it, it was a little flat. He, but it played to the. I saw it as he's a sociopath. That he Maybe doesn't, he doesn't have he doesn't Maybe, have the yeah. ability to to show ex, uh, emotions. I was and, I just wanted a little a little mad scientist. Yeah, just a little little yeah, little he, doctor he, doctor. He Jekyll. doesn't cackle at all. So no, there's yeah. no cackling. Uh, but anyway, so that's so I. Eyes without a face. <laughs> and that's a little Billy Idol for anybody out there. And actually, Billy Idol did, I think, use Eyes Without a Face for, for his uh, for his song. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, oh, number, number, number three on my first and foursome list is a 1961 British psychological horror film called The Innocence. Mm. Very, very Oh, yeah. This, uh, this plot follows a governess who watches over two children and comes to fear that their large estate is haunted by ghosts and the children are actually being possessed. It starts with uh, a guy in London, I believe, who brings on this woman and basically says, look, I don't have time to look over these kids, my, um, uh, but I want you to go to this large country estate and look over the kids. There may or may not have been a murder. There, the house may or may not be haunted, but I want you to go and look after these kids. And as you get there, I mean, much like in The Haunting, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of one of these great, great tales, which the tales, these tales are just not really told that much anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I guess they, maybe they're told in different ways, like in, in the case of like Unsane, is like, you know, is, is the protagonist crazy or are they really experiencing a supernatural phenomenon to wit? The interesting thing about it was that the the uh, so this was directed by Jack Clayton, uh, and it was and it was produced by Jack Clayton, and and so he he brought on um, his whole his whole sort of worldview was that he definitely wanted to show the idea that the house was haunted and that the children were possessed. He he wanted to make that very very clear, but a lot of the folks that were involved with the film were sort of like, "No, we should we should play it a little bit more coy. We should we should be a little less obvious with that and to maybe create this idea or uh, create manufacture this idea that the protagonist is maybe just totally crazy." So they brought on um the, they brought on for the screenplay William Archibald and some guy named Truman Capote. Ooh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who that? Uh, and so uh, Truman Capote, and so they took they they rewrote it and incorporated uh, Truman Capote in particular uh, incorporated all these like different psychological themes that resulted in you know a f- it resulted in a product that was a lot more vague, mm-hmm. which I think was much more riveting. Right. Um, you know, as I was just as as I was just talking about with eyes eyes without a face, the acting was a little flat. I thought the acting was a little flat in this one, but um, the kids are actually pretty good. Uh, it's a it's a boy and a girl, a uh, 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 brother sister pair that are involved in the hauntings, and um, and then of course their their governor, governess, their nanny, if for all practical purposes, who you know they're stuck in this massive, massive, massive estate. Um, 
you know, and, and effectively left to themselves to mm-hmm. try to sort through this mystery of why uh, the previous govern- governess and others, you know, had passed away. And there are some really, really effectively creepy scenes. In fact, there is a scene, I'm going to say this, and, and I could be totally, totally off base here, mm-hmm. but there's a scene where a young woman pops up uh, on the, beside this body of water with a building behind her and I swear to God, and I don't know if if this is true or not, this is total speculation on my part, but it looks exactly like the first Black Sabbath album cover <laughs> with, with the woman standing next to the body of water. And I was like, holy shit, that is really creepy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that's where Black Sabbath ripped that off. So, yep. Ozzy, if you're listening, we would we, know, lo- we know you got it. We would love to have you on the podcast to debunk that myth, or, or Tony <laughs> Iommi, or Geezer Butler, or Bill Ward. Any of you are welcome. So, welcome onto the podcast. So now, would you say that the innocence? I mean, we just talked about it with uh, sure uh, eyes without a face. Yeah, uh, horror movie more than thriller, or is it? Uh, oh no, no, I think this definitely has a thriller quality because I mean, from from the get go, they 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 sort of paint this picture that the house is indeed haunted, and okay. and the children are. Possessed. Okay. I mean, they're not capital P possessed like in the Bad Seed, but they're they're definitely like some very very peculiar behavior mm-hmm. on the part of the children that just ain't <laughs> it just ain't right. Um, the interesting thing was that uh, that that a lot of film theorists theorized that the main character Miss Giddens, who was the sort of governess nanny, was that 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 all of the supernatural f- phenomena that she was experiencing were sort of a result she was she was you know kind of a kind of a school marm pretty repressed but that this was all a result of her sexual repression uh, and and okay. and the fact that she that she was you know in the you know in in her mid 30s was not married and didn't have children of her own for shame this, yes for shame so this was all like a manifestation of that and the fact that she was like totally sexually repressed um the other interesting thing was that in 1960s, of course, came out in 1961, and the British Board of Film Censors, now known as the British Board of Film Classification, or the BBFC. Okay. Now, do you think the BBFC is uh, tougher on films than the MPAA? Well, let me tell you. Let me finish that sentence. Okay. They gave it an X rating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that meant that no person under the age of 16 could check out The Innocents in oh, 1961. Wow. So, yeah, they were like, they clamped down mighty, mighty heavy. So do you think, do you think this is a rated R movie today? Oh no, it's like barely PG, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you Brits, and you're just too, no, no. Too I mean, no. I you know, I think I that's that's it's tough to do those kind of apples and orange comparisons. But I would say you know, it's 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 probably a solid PG thirteen by today's standards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously, if they brought it into if they brought it into the modern era, a lot of a lot of stuff would change. Right. I mean, they would probably spell out for us you know, her sexual repression and they would probably spell out a lot of other crap that we don't need to have spelled out for us. Right. All right. Number three on your fearsome foursome list is, well, uh, I am also going to a 1964 Japanese movie. Oh, I know which one. Quite on. Uh, quite on. Oh, yep. Quite on. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> no, quite you on. Got it. no, I it. I knew it. Really <laughs> fine. Um, I, uh, this is super cool looking. This is Shakespeare. Oh, hundred uh, percent. This is hundred percent. Also, a Criterion movie, and yeah. it ne- and I am so glad that they show it in Criterion. The Innocence was not a Criterion. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. well, so, but we've got uh, three out of our four movies so far. Are so Criterion. far, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, this is a, a movie directed by uh, Masaki Kobayashi. Yep, um, and it's actually it's an anthology, uh, right. and they're all period pieces. And I, I kind of wish that I knew more about uh, Japanese history. And um, what, what year was this again? I can't remember. 1964. 64, right. Okay. Same, same um, year as Onibaba. Yeah, uh, whereas Onibaba was a black and white film. Right. This one was in spectacular color. Right. The right. colors on this thing are just sumptuous. Yeah. Uh, and the special effects are right. really cool, too. And there are some really cool effects. And, and, and it's, in like, a way... Like, like it, special effects that you go... Like even by today's standards, you go, huh? That's really cool. That's I, that's really really sharp. Not not just that, but it's it's done like I think uh, it's a stage play, right? Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. It's, it's definitely it's like on a big set in the way that Night of the Hunter 
yep. had that same kind of a feel. It's yep. like it's a it's a gorgeous. First and foremost, it's cinema, right? And then they would have some shots of sometimes to the ocean or or something like that, or right, uh, right. Uh, uh, but there would be you could see drops. You could mm-hmm. see that some of the things that, and you could tell that there was there was a bit of soundstage to it. And I don't know if that was intentional at the time. I have to think that it was because they were just they would usually saturate the colors with that stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, this is this is uh, it's an anthology where the mm-hmm. the 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 first first story it was is called Black Hair, right? Which is a story about a. a, a uh, a young samurai who is feels that he hasn't lived up to his station, so he leaves his loyal wife to to find him, him uh, himself a new uh, sponsor or master. Right, uh, right. Because if you're otherwise you're a ronin and you're you're a shogun without honor and all these kinds of the. And I think so that was a <coughs> it was a it was an examination of love versus duty. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and it comes back where he the he he gets into another loveless marriage. He pines for his wife, and then he goes back to her. And then things are, you know, he starts he the 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 the, the, the house has fallen into disrepair. Right, he can't find his wife. Then he finds his wife, and everything seems to be blissful, but it it isn't. It is that, that, that it starts to reveal that everything around him is an illusion and it's been actually decaying. And she's a cannibal. And, and she, yeah, well, no, she's a, <laughs> she's, she's dead. Oh, uh, and, she's a ghost. She's a ghost. Um, better. And, and, better. Uh, and it's, and it was, it's that one. Was, it was, it was sad. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then yeah. My, the, my favorite one was the second one. Actually the second one and the third one are both fantastic. Um, the woman in the snow is a tale of a couple of woodcutters who get lost in the, they're, they're trying to get back and and um, not to be in, a bl- in, a, with, in a blizzard. Not to be confused with Lady Snowblood. Uh, well, Lady Snowblood, what's that? Oh, oh, you, you're going to have to get on that. All right, that's the ultimate in Grindhouse. Okay, uh, no, this is, um, but this is a you know, there's a a woodcutter and his apprentice, and then they take shelter in a fishing shack when in a, during a blizzard, um, and then they get visited by a specter who kills the old man and sucks the life out of him. But spares the young man because she sees a lot of she she holds out hope that he's going to become something right and says you, this is a secret you cannot reveal this to anybody right um, and then he lives a very happy life afterwards he manages to survive the survive the blizzard but he makes a mistake um, he falls in love with a woman and he says the wrong thing and Uh-oh. I don't want to spoil that too much because I think the, the, there's a there's some real beauty to that story and. You know, there are. This is very much like a like a, a grim fairy tale or an Aesop's fable or something. It's right, like, right, right, right. If if a specter that 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 killed the old man tells you never to do this or I will kill you, <laughs> you do not you do not break that trust. Don't do it. Um, and that was that was that was gorgeous. There was one. The third one to, was to to quote Melania Trump. <laughs> be, be be better <laughs> or be best. Be best. <laughs> be best. <laughs> Listen to the specter. Be best. Be best. <laughs> um, there, the third one is a was a piece called Hoichi the Earless, which is about a musician, a, a, a blind musician. Mm-hmm. Kind of, this is like going devil goes down to the crossroads. Right, right, uh, right. But actually, it it, it actually uh, this is the precursor to audition. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no the eyeless there's no kitty 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 the, the eyeless musician. <laughs> um, they. There's a they give you a history lesson. This gorgeous, as you were saying, the special effects that they would they would intercut a bunch of woodblock kind of paintings about uh, the the two rival clans going to war right. at sea. Right, right. And one side completely obliterates the other side, and they're all dead. And they go to the bottom of the sea, and they and they go on to haunt the the this village near near where that that battle was. And the musician ends up playing. He gets he gets summoned by the ghosts to retell the story of of the of that famous battle. Mm-hmm. And um, but he's a monk, and the monks who he's he's this young young fella, and the monks get worried about him, and they follow him out, and they pull him away, and they break the circle, and then the ghosts exact revenge. And um, again, listen to the yeah, specter. Yeah, again, this is these are all sort of ghost and devil stories. Ghost that, cautionary tales. Listen um, to the specter. And the come fourth, on, the fourth one is the is the shortest and simplest one. It's called um, "In a Cup of Tea," mm-hmm. um, where there's a, a a man who is 
um, who looks into, uh, sees a reflection in his cup of tea, and it's not him, it's somebody else. Right. And he freaks out and he tosses it away and he keeps on seeing this this image of a man who's not him right. in, the, in, in his cup of tea. <clears throat> and eventually he's set upon by some people. So the, 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 it's a ghost. Right. And then the ghost sends um, some of his um, uh, servants or his, his essentially his, his body men to go check it out. And, and so then there's a bunch of, you know, samurai fighting and stuff like that. Right, right, but, right. Um, <clears throat> it's another, it, it, it's, it's, there are all four of these, and I don't want to, you know, to, to tell, explain any more would spoil the endings for these sure. things. Um, all of them are spectacularly paint, painted. Yes. But it, I, I will warn your, the casual watcher, this is like Shakespeare. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is hard to get into. It yeah, because it's it's period drama. Yep, and it is, um, and they uh, there's a lot of silence, right, uh, in it. And but they each each one of these stories gets played out to near perfect endings, right. And if you so if you stay with each of the stories, they're wonderful. Did you watch the dubbed version or did you watch the? Uh, oh God, you cannot watch the dubbed, <laughs> the dubbed version. But, and that's actually part of the trick is if you're tired and you're watching this thing. Yeah, you, I ended up having to back up and watch some of this stuff. I'll admit, yeah, I was getting tired. You got to pay attention because yeah. because there. Well, you know, the, uh, Oni Baba did not have it. The, there is no dubbed version. The Criterion does not. Yeah. There's no dub. Right. It's like you watch Japanese right. with English subtitles. Right. That's that's your yeah. choice. And, and I think what so we can stick see with it with both of these movies. And with the ascendancy of Akira Kurosawa, uh huh. This is, I think, and, and I, I've actually, uh, our friends at the Kaiju Cast, uh, right, uh, with Jeff and um, and and Gretchen and Clancy and all those folks over at the uh, at the Kaiju Cast, uh, I, I heard an interesting take that they had about what about the fall, the 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 struggles that the Godzilla movies had in the seventies, right? Um, in that. Japan all of a sudden got access to television in the 70s. Oh, and right, And they right, turned right. away from cinema. Right. And so cinema had a real, the, you know, the economy in Japan switched on, on how their entertainment was done. And so a lot of these great horror movies, mm -hmm. this is the high watermark of, of J uh, Japanese cinema for a while. Until, right. You know, I guess I think. It, until it, the aughts. Until the aughts, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so... There was uh, largely an absence of, of Japanese horror movies from the 70s, which is kind of funny considering everything else kind of went nuts. Right, um, right. We'll get there, though. We'll be doing a podcast about J-horror yes. at some point. And, and actually, I think, uh, and, and I made a promise to Liz that yes. she Liz, wants to be in on the J-horror discussion. Liz, Liz is, uh, yes, our resident J-horror expert, so we will be getting back to J-horror. All right, uh, number two on my fearsome foursome list, getting away from... Uh, the august and and uh, beautiful Criterion Collection films. I'm going to the 1963 film Herschel Gordon Lewis's <laughs> Blood Feast. Okay, I I, I was going to save that one for the the, <laughs> the, the, the other. Well, this is, I mean this this may be well this this is largely credited. You can read my review on. Um, I'm I'm not going to spend a lot of time because you can actually go to thescariestthings.com. 1T website and read my review of Blood Feast. I mean, because this really is like the first gore film ever. Yep. Ever, ever, ever. And it's it's a it's an amazing film. Basically involves a uh, a psychopathic uh, Egyptian food caterer, which sounds really ridiculous, named uh, Faoud Ramses, who kills women so he can include their body parts in in <laughs> in this giant feast, the Blood Feast, so that he can sacrifice. Uh, he, can, he can offer and perform a sacrifice to the Egyptian goddess Ishtar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so there's a lot of very questionable provenance in this film, <laughs> up to and including. And beware of Ishtar. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Hoffman and uh, uh, Warren Beatty. And Warren Beatty were clearly never saw uh, Blood Feast, otherwise, they would not have agreed to do <laughs> Ishtar. <laughs> um, it's it's amazing because you know this film was originally done for a budget of twenty four thousand dollars in nineteen sixty three. It has grossed over four million dollars now. I mean, I don't know how much of that went actually went to the Herschel Gordon right. Lewis estate, but I mean, made a ton. They, they this movie made a ton, a ton of movie, and I will a ton of money. And I will tell you this, um, you know, for the for the gore fans out there, for the you know the fans of 
of of the farm and Terrifier and Texas Chainsaw. This is actually a very very gory yeah, film. There are pic- <coughs> yeah, and yeah, just like s- severed limbs, just uh, every, the, the blood, top blood top guts. of a head pulled off, a a tongue pulled through a throat. Um, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. A decapitated leg. Yeah. I mean, they use some really, really, really nasty, nasty stuff. You know, and it, as I was kind of talking about earlier too, you know, a lot of the influence from Herschel Gordon Lewis was, you know, he saw Psycho in 1960, and apparently at the time he was like, um, I think he was working as a, um, I think he was working as a college. Uh, or as a teacher at Mississippi State College, and he quit. You know, he quit his job uh, largely to follow um, his dream of making film, and and you know he was he was involved in some of the like you know early kind of nudie uh, films in the nineteen so sixties, like along alongside with Russ Meyer, kind of a thing. Kind of yeah, that that kind of stuff. And and he but he saw Psycho, and he was like, oh my god, you know if 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 uh, Alfred Hitchcock can do this. I, I can I can probably step it up like way more so, right. and I can add a lot of hype to it. And he did, and you know they even you know they even went so far as to hand out you know uh, vomit uh, bags. Sure, that's a classic. Um, they 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 intentionally took out an injunction against the film when it when it when it aired in Florida, so the film goers would be like, "Oh my God, this you know this film's people are litigating against right. this film. I definitely should not see this film." Right. But but in fact, people, I mean, it was a great gag. It was, psychology. It was a great yep. promotional stunt, and both were super super duper effective and generated a lot of interest in the film in the UK this film this film did actually appear on the video nasty list and was on <laughs> so so more was, than just rated x this was banned it was banned and it was banned in in the UK for 40 years oh. it wasn't until 2005 that the UK finally went okay we can uh, we'll acquiesce and right. you can you can see blood because feast. because we because you can go see hostile right. so right yeah. right 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 so uh, this is what I will warn audiences if you're looking for a great masterwork it is not a great masterwork I mean you we're, we're talking about sort of like you know Russ Myers John Waters I mean it is Super ridiculous. The acting is is not all that. Uh, the sets are really ridiculous. You know, the film, the film culminates in a chase scene in a garbage dump, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm guessing was done totally, totally without permit and on a guerrilla basis. But the <laughs> the, the film, you know, without Blood Feast. I mean, somebody would have made Blood Feast. I think mm-hmm. eventually it, it, that that film would have been made, whether it was right. called Blood Feast and whether it had that. Um, that specific subject matter is is you know is obviously up for debate, but that film definitely would have been made uh, based on Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. So it was just a, I think it was just a matter of time. And but the fact that Herschel Gordon Lewis actually sat down and made the film is 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 just as important as any other film mm-hmm. in in horror. Yeah. So Blood Feast, nineteen sixty three. Go see it. It also is a short film too. It's like an hour and ten minutes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So you don't have to spend a lot of time in it. And it's fun. Right. It's fun. So my number two. Number two on uh, the fearsome force of This is my favorite of the AIP movies. Ooh. Uh, so American International Productions, uh, which um, sort of kept a, a, was watching the the success of Hammer across the pond. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we want to get in on this period drama too. Right. Uh, and this is the second of uh, Roger Corman's um, Edgar Allan Poe series. Oh, right? uh, so the first one was the Fall of the House of Usher, right? Uh, which was a huge success, right? Uh, so this is Pit and the Pendulum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and good uh, one. This is uh, starring the inimitable Vincent Price as yes. Don Nicholas Medina, the son of the Grand High Inquisitor torturer. Uh, the, the the Spanish Inquisition. Yes, nobody expects a Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, uh, John Kerr plays Francis uh, Bernard, who is looking in on the death of his sister, who is uh, the lovely Barbara Steele, uh, mm-hmm. who was who played Elizabeth, uh, who was uh, Vincent Price's uh, betrothed, his wife. I think actually he was he was actually married. Um, uh, who died uh, of fright right. uh, by messing around with the torture devices in the basement of the castle. Um, <laughs> and they have these great frilly collars. So this is like uh, 
Oh, no, what, what year are we talking about again? This is this is this movie was done in 1963. 63, okay. And then, um, but the movie purportedly takes place in 1584. Sure, so sure. It's, uh, uh, ye old Spain, right? Um, and right. the guy, you know, the, and now I, this is it's extraordinarily hammy, <laughs> okay. Uh, despite as, all the sh- as, as many Vincent Price films are, as uh, you know, despite <laughs> all of the Elizabethan trappings, right, with the fancy costumes and the fabulous castle sets, right, and that fabulous big swinging pendulum blade, which is right. a great poster, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. They couldn't get out of their own way with the acting, I right? Mean, it was right. really, really stiff. Um, well, which, which, which is amazing to think that that Roger Corman would have ever applied any production values to anything. Yeah, right? th- th- this is this is the they, but they they were watching what certainly like uh, uh, the Fury of Dracula. Or no, right. not Fury of Dracula. What was the um, um, the first the fifty eight Dracula with Christopher Lee? The first oh one, yeah yeah um, yeah yeah and uh, and how they would use these spectacular European sets. Right, um, right, and. But nobody, nobody chews up a scene like Vincent Price, nope. and this is his most Vincent Pricey. I, I mean, think I think we will have to get to a full blown best of the best Vincent Price yep. podcast. I I, I if, abso- if any actor deserves it, it's that guy. I absolutely adored watching him and his 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 dramatic pauses and his <laughs> he uh, he looks like he would his when he would break down emotionally. It was like. Yeah, go for it. And, it's like, and, and and then he goes mad, right? He faints, right? You know, he's just like, and, and and you know because he thinks that he's seen you know his 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 wife who's right. come back from the dead, right? And right. Then, but it's it's you know so there's all this manipulation and madness and melodrama, right? Right. And he has an unfortunate end, and you know he gets he he the. He he's essentially he's tricked right uh, right but and and he's being he's being worked over by he's like it's not it's the the he's that the, the, the poor dude's being played but he also happens to be the son of the grand torturer so right right and right. he has plenty of devices at his disposal <laughs> um, and and so it it offers a lot of of of, of dread it but it is also sort of occupying the same era as uh, uh, your. The, the the Herschel Gordon Lewis oh, blood feast blood feast yeah um, so kind of kind of drive in fair right but this is I think this was was uh, hugely hugely successful coming next weekend at the Y drive in it's pit in the pendulum and, and. blood feast <laughs> double feature <laughs> they would be an ill pair <laughs> um, I I think that this you know uh, I think you know AIP for all that they would they would uh, pitch that sort of the tawdriness right of right it. you know they would show that this blade was going to come down and split someone in two but they never pull it off right right right, right. they don't right, right. Don't, it's all it, yeah, it's all implied had, yeah had, had uh, Herschel gotten a hand on this one <laughs> it there would have taken like five swings across there would have been a lot of heads rolling <laughs> and, heads and are rolling lots of mangling involved <laughs> but uh, you know. Uh, in this, you get lots of arched eyebrows, right, right, you get right. Lots of ruffled colors, which is exactly uh, everything you want from Vincent Price. He is so wonderful in this movie. I, you know, in fact, it's still I, I'm doing a second watch through again, so it's still still sitting on the television here. Um, anyhow, that the, if you're gonna catch, um, you know, because the, they also he did the Raven, he did right. Um, Oh gosh, I got I had a had a running list here, but yeah, the uh, fall of the House of Usher, right? Um, House of Wax, the Bat, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah uh, you know, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, the, the Tingler, list, yes. The uh, list goes on and the fly. on, uh, on you know, and on and on. Uh, which which Finder General, yeah, uh, Doctor Fibes. I mean, the man he earned the reputation, and he's. I think the thing is that he's both he's lovable, yep, and he's creepy. Yep, and he's creepy and lovable at the same time. That's a trick. That's a hard thing to pull off without being Johnny Depp. And you always root for him. You always root. Yeah, you don't yep. root for Johnny Depp. No, you always, <laughs> always, always root for Vincent Price. All right, number one on my fearsome foursome list. I will go quickly here. Um, uh, Blood and Black Lace from 1964. Oh, I'm, I, Th- you know, I, this just, is just for the record. Yes, I am stunned. Did you watch it? Okay, no. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, that that that. that, that I, th- I thought you were going to pull Bla- uh, um, oh. Black Sabbath. Oh, no. I, I, I did watch Black Sabbath. I, I think Blood and Black Lace is better, and here's why. Okay. It's the first Giallo film. Okay. It's the first slasher film. Okay. I would argue it is the first slasher film. Uh, this is a film that uh, basically involves 
uh, a stalker and brutal murders of uh, scantily clad fashion models that are committed by a mass killer in a desperate attempt to obtain a scandal revealing diary. I mean, it's got all the giallo okay. elements, like, you know, like point of view stalking in the bushes, mm-hmm. uh, horrible, horrible, torturous scenes. Um, uh, you know, it has influenced a legion, legion of filmmakers, including Dario Argento, Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino. So who's I our mean, director here? Uh, this, of course, is Mario Bava. Okay. Um, and uh, apparently uh, it was voted number 85. Martin Scorsese um, uh, indicated that uh, for apparently a, a, a film or a, a, a TV series they did in 2004, the 100 Scariest Moments in Movie History. This was number 85. There was a scene in the film that was number 85 on Bravo, on the Bravo TV network. So if that's <laughs> any indication for, Wait, no, the, okay, I, for I, I, the provenance of... Um, okay, I just I just had to get past in my mind. I was yes. thinking, when you said Bravo, I was thinking Lifetime. And I was thinking, <laughs> that's not, that's something incongruous. It's there. No, the Oprah going. Network. No, mm-hmm. um, it's it's... It's a great film. I mean, it is so colorful. I mean, it's colorful in the same way that that Suspiria was colorful. It's got an incredible, incredible soundtrack. It's got an incredible tracking shot opening credit sequence. And it's like if you like Giallo films where there's lots of twists, twists, double twists and turns, this has got all of them up to and including you know, a slasher who is stalking models in the fashion industry. And and the thing that's amazing, too, is that this is, you know, this is a film from 1964, and sort of the subtext to a lot of it is the fact that several of the models are addicted to, guess what, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> this was in 1964. So this, I mean, this okay. was really like, this was, you know, some pretty cutting-edge stuff for the time. And, and well, of course, you know, this was, okay, so, so, uh, you know, I, w- I was mentioning before sort of right. the societal changes. Right. Uh, what year was so? Where were we in the Beatles cycle at this point? Where we at? Is this, I, they were still pretty early on. Yeah. So this is this might be Rubber Soul era because I think Sergeant uh, Pepper was like. When, I think Rubber Soul was like sixty six. Uh, maybe. Yeah. So this would be 65? early sixty so five. You know, yeah. And and what was uh you know the Stones her her. her uh, uh, the, the Satan, her Satan's. Man. Oh yeah, that that was that was later on. That was yeah. like 60, 68, 69. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously Mario Bava went on to do lots of other stuff, like you know, the Evil Eye and Bay of Blood, and um, you know, Shock, and you know, uh, House of Exorcism, and Rabid Dogs, and uh, Lisa and the Devil, and I mean, he, I mean, he went on to do a ton, a ton of other stuff. Um, some of which is. You know, I, I I will honestly admit here is is rather questionable, but um, this was this was like this was this was a genre defining film. I mean, this was a this was a film that really like broke the mold. I mean, much in the same way that Herschel Gordon Lewis broke the mold with Blood Feast, you can easily argue that Mario Bava broke the mold with um, Blood and Black Lace. I mean, this this truly was one of the first. Giallo films, one of the first grindhouse films. I would highly, highly, out of all the films okay. I've mentioned tonight, I would really, really encourage fo- folks to see this film because it, it is, it's just a great movie. It's a really, really great movie. Well, you, you're going to appreciate this then. Yes. Okay, so we're going Bava for Bava. Bava for Bava. And, and another sort of iconic. Number one on your fearsome foursome list is Planet of the Vampires. Yes. <laughs> Hell like, okay, yeah. So this is. Now, Hell yes! It, it, so Hell this, yes! This sort of influences things, of course, like something like Alien or right. you know, the, uh, in a very light like, way. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. But it, 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 it and and uh, but they have these. You know, it's 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 hyper colorful, right? And it's, right. And it's just and it's got like planet of sexy women and can't, can't beat that. You know, and and and. Uh, Barry Sullivan, who looks kind of like Jean Claude Van Damme, you know, <laughs> and, and you know they got the skimpy spacesuits. It's it's space action. It's horror. It's like there's it's it's, it's, it's astronauts and vampires, and you know that they you know that they there's the 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 mutiny the 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 the, the what do you call it the 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 turning against the 
the uh, 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 team members against each other, and it's, right, right, and in a way, you know, and it's and it's and it's bloody in the way that you know that and it kind of well, and it predates. I mean, like in terms of the the, the set design stuff is pretty futuristic and yeah. really interesting looking, yeah. and, and and totally predates obviously Star Trek, right? And and you know the monster looks great. I mean, oh, it's, absolutely. So you know, I think it's it is granted this is it's cheesy. Oh yeah, uh, and it's and I you know I I kind of I have to admit I kind of expected a little bit. Well, I didn't I, one I didn't expect a ton from it. I was it's like it's like is it better than it the terror from beyond space? Yes. Uh, <laughs> is it as good as Alien? No. Uh, it sort of falls between it 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 it, 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 it falls within the middle ground. Um, I still think, you know, I think, but moreover, it's fun. Right. It's a romp. Right. It's, right. it is, um, and it shows sort of a lighter side of Bava. Right. That, um, I don't, but, th- but he, he definitely brings the, the, the color and the sound. Oh, no, absolutely. This is, like, so I think, I think this is like space giallo in a way, <laughs> right? Space giallo. Um, man. Where, as opposed to. Eric, quick, copyright that. Yeah, <laughs> space jello. Space copyright, not space jello. <laughs> copyright. They've already got space jello. Um, you know, because I that my, is my experience with with Bava, don't touch it. Black Sunday. Yeah, I think I still think Black Sunday is the best thing that he's done. I I think that that. Uh, have you seen Blood and Black Lace? I haven't seen Blood don't, and Black Lace. Don't say that so fast. Okay, well, I don't mean, say that so fast. Maybe it's just that I got a soft spot for. Yeah, no, for, it's a, it's, for, a, it's, a, it's a, no, it's a great film. But yeah, watch Blood and Black Lace. Okay. I think you'd be surprised. Well, you've seen Planet of the Vampires. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just and it it it's it, it it's not Kubrick. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like, no. It, but it 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 is him taking a riff on the classic. 50s, we're gone to the, we're, we're, <laughs> we're going, going to, to the moon, and we're, it's like, <laughs> and there's sexy vampires, uh, and you guys, it's like, and just that, uh, with that kind of that Italian kind of the uh, <laughs> swagger, right. I, you know, for lack of a better term, um, and sexy and great space looking, vampire swagger, you know, great looking sexy vampires, great looking monsters. You know, it's just it. So, uh, anyways, uh, I think I think in addition, what I've learned tonight is that in addition to doing a podcast about Vincent Price, we will also be doing a podcast about Mario Bava. Yeah, (laughs) and his contributions to horror. I I, I'm getting my introduction to him now. Right, 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 right. right, This is in a way that I think we were just talking with Liz about her getting introduced to some of the old Universal monsters. Oh yeah, 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 and that kind of stuff. And then and and we didn't. You know, I didn't know pretty much anything about 1940s horror. Right, right, um, right. And right. this is like 60s horror in my in in my mind was always a bit of a wasteland. It's like right. really like when you think of the, the there's like a few of the great ones. You always you think Psycho, you think Night of the Living Dead, you think Rosemary's Baby. Answer wrong. It's it, it is it, not a wasteland. To, there to, is to like the point where we're so having much. to break it down with so many other. I mean, I I didn't touch on any of the Hammer movies. Right. You know, uh, I, I I was I was tempted to do the Gorgon, right? Right, uh, right. which is you know Vincent Price and Christopher Lee, right? And you know, and a Gorgon, you yeah. know that that, that, that you know, the, but at the same time, it's I think that the trends that are changing, and I right. think that the uh, and I, so what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to tr- to focus on the international side of things, and right? That's, so right. so we and we and we barely even scratched the surface of yeah. that. Yeah, well, I mean, well, we did like what? So two, two from Japan, right. two from Italy, one, one from, from France, France uh, and, and one from Florida. Uh, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> well, which is its own country sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, for so any of our Florida so, listeners, you which know one, what I'm talking which one, about. Which is the Florida one? Uh, Blood, Blood Feast. Oh, right, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, was, yeah, right. it, was, it was shot in Florida. Yeah. Uh, All right, I think we're running super long again. So why don't you take us out? All right. Take us out quickly. Well, uh, hold on. Let's see. Unless you have any more thoughts you, about you, the, you, the early you, part of the 1960s. Do you have any grave digging? I have no grave digging. Let's let's get on out of here. We're running long. We're, we're running my, long. Hold on, my tagline, my tagline fell off. The, your tagline, well, it should fall off because it's... it's. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> right. Hold on. This is, I have the absolute best tagline. <laughs> Folks, stay with me here because... Uh, a- a- absolute best has a giant, giant, bold asterisk next to it. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> because there, you have to put things into context. There's a historical. Okay, 
Uh, do, so, you want, do you want me to put the put the um, the the uh, ambience effect on this? Sure, we can. We, we'll, we'll go because we have our new uh, recording equipment. We go uh, with some with some effects. All right, now just give it to us. Give it to us. This is from Eyes Without a Face. Beautiful women were the victims of his fiendish facials. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think there was a different context back then. Yuck. Until next time. Yuck. Hehehehe. <laughs>